Chuck Keels is a fighter. This year, he plans to bike from California to Florida in two months. Finishing the 3,000-mile trek will be an incredible feat in itself. Even more so, considering that seven years ago, he was given just three months to live. It was a really, really scary time for me, but I watched my body melt off of me. I was dying. As a single dad, Chuck enjoyed hiking and mountain biking in the hills around Phoenix where he lived with his two teenage boys, Dante and Chucky. He was in good health until mid-April of 2015. I noticed that I was getting tired. I noticed that there was pain starting in my body because each day I got up and it was worse. Then the evening of May 15, Chuck's pain was so intense that he went to the ER. After a battery of tests, his doctor told him he had two fractured vertebrae. What she said next left Chuck stunned. And she said, everything you're going through is cancer related. And I just felt the tears rolling down my face. I can't believe that I have cancer um, at the age of 50 years old. Cancer makes you step back and look at what really is important in your life. For Chuck, that had always been providing for his boys. God and a relationship with him wasn't a priority. I wasn't close to God. It was, you know, church and a prayer once in a while with my kids before bed. I, I didn't go to God at that time. Biopsies would reveal Chuck had stage four prostate cancer, and it had spread to 90% of his bones. His doctors offered hospice care to ease his pain and sent Chuck home to die. That was a very, very difficult time because that's when I had to tell my boys it was a nightmare. Um, I had to sit him down on the couch and uh, explain to them that the doctors said that I might have three more months to live. Chuck made plans to move back to Ohio, where extended family would take care of his boys after he was gone. You plan for a graduation, you plan for a wedding, you plan for these things when you're a parent, you know? and all of a sudden this diagnosis comes down, and then it starts going through your head. You know, you're not going to see that you know, graduation. You won't see them get married. And uh, it was, <laughs> it was tough. It was really tough. On May 25th, the morning they were to leave Arizona, Chuck was walking down the hall when he heard a pop. And the next thing I know is I'm flat on my face on the ground and I couldn't move. The pain was excruciating. Um, it felt like uh, somebody was stabbing me in the back with a knife and then running it up to my head. EMTs rushed Chuck to the nearest hospital, John C. Lincoln in Phoenix, a new hospital and a new doctor. They discovered one of Chuck's vertebrae, eroded by cancer, had collapsed. However, this doctor had a plan. Surgically stop Chuck's testosterone, which was feeding the cancer, and start him on six months of chemo. Their goal was to just give me another six months, year, maybe two years of life. They said, if we can do that, you know, that's, that's amazing. I was excited about, about, the, uh, about the surgery. Chuck was in tremendous pain and on a morphine drip all night. The next morning after the successful surgery, he woke up in the recovery room and noticed there was someone next to his bed. I'm looking at Jesus, he's looking at me. His hand reaches out and touches me on the shoulder. I didn't see his mouth move, but I heard in my head, I got you. And I look up and he's gone. I was in the presence of Jesus, and I'm flipping out. I'm just, everything's going through my head. I cannot understand what's going on here. Um, and so the question was, you know, why me? Moments later, Chuck noticed he was no longer in pain. That night, he decided his relationship with God would never be the same. I thank God, and I started thinking about it. And I said, I know you've been probably trying my entire life, but you got my attention now. I completely surrender to you. I'm gonna let you orchestrate my life. Chuck started his chemo and stayed in the hospital for 10 days. Then he was transferred to the Mayo Clinic in Scottsdale for five weeks of additional rehab. There, he enjoyed walks in the surrounding desert and a deepening connection with God. The conversations that I had with God are just life-changing. And God said, as long as you're alive, be alive. So I said, that's what I'm gonna do. I call it God school. After three months of treatment, Chuck returned to his doctor for an assessment. She's got a big smile on her face. She says, uh, your journey's not of medicine, it's miraculous. 
your scans look like a normal, healthy guy. When Chuck completed chemo in November of 2015, there was no longer any trace of cancer in his body, and a bone scan showed absolutely no damage. She says, if we didn't know you, and we hadn't seen your previous scans, we would think you're lying to us. Your bones are completely clean. I was completely healed 100% when uh, Jesus touched me on the shoulder. Chuck has since remarried and started a foundation which offers assistance to people battling cancer. His ride across the country is to raise awareness for his foundation and healing power that God offers. I see now the power of having a relationship with Jesus. That's what takes the stress and the worry off you. That's why you can still smile at the end of the day, even though you're going through something really, really, really tough. That makes a huge difference in your entire life. What a remarkable journey for Chuck. Here is this single dad who needs to sit his children down and, and start to plan for their life without him. And then years later, he goes to the medical community again, and they say, if we didn't know your story, we would think your recovery, your healing is a lie. And along the way, Chuck got to know Jesus intimately and personally, and you heard him say the conversations he had with God were just life-changing. Ashley and I wanna pray for you today for intimacy with the Father and your relationship with him, and also for those of you who need healing. And we have some, before we pray, some more great reports of people who have been healed. We heard from a gentleman named Dan on Facebook, and he said, 10 years ago, I was diagnosed with stage four prostate cancer. I went through treatment, even had it removed. For a few years, things were fine, but three years ago, the doctors were concerned that it had spread. My church gathered together for a powerful night of prayer. I felt my healing happen that night, and I have been cancer-free ever since. That's incredible. Well, another viewer on Instagram this time said, I was told I would never be able to have children due to multiple health issues. This was so discouraging for me. And when I got married, I knew that I wanted to have a child. We tried for almost eight years. Finally, I got pregnant with my son. I now have three children who are healthy and I'm currently pregnant with our fourth do any day. Praise the Lord. I just pray and I hope that that story that you just saw of the man who had cancer spread to 90% of his body, he was miraculously healed. Healed not only in the natural by chemotherapy, but supernaturally healed. That is the God that we serve. We can cry out to the Lord for healing, for an answer. And He is so good and so loving. He hears every cry. He sees every tear that we shed because He is the God who sees us. He is your creator. He is your heavenly Father and He loves you so much, He will answer. We just have to be open to receive whatever that answer is. But because Jesus died on the cross, we just celebrated Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, we just celebrated the fact that Jesus no longer is in that tomb. And I was just in Israel, in Jerusalem, Israel, and I went to the garden tomb, I went to the Church of the Holy Sepulcher, which are supposed tombs that Jesus was buried in. He's not there. He's not there. Let's focus on that, that Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father, interceding for you and I. So what is your need today? Have faith that Jesus, our Savior, our Redeemer, is praying for you, praying for your healing, and healing you by the stripes that He bore thousands of years ago. So let's pray right now. Just bring that to the forefront of your mind, whatever you're you're crying out to God for. Bring that to the Father right now as we pray for you and your needs. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for who you are. We thank you for your son, Jesus, who died on the cross and resurrected three days later. And we thank you that he is now seated at your right hand, interceding for us. Lord God, we just pray for every single person watching whether they're watching live or watching this back. Lord God, whatever their cry is today, we just pray and declare in the name of Jesus that you will answer them. 
and that the answer is coming even right now in Jesus' name. And we just speak healing to their bodies, to their minds, to their hearts in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Father, we think of Matthew 18, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And Father God, we just bind cancer right now. Yes. We have seen these story, uh, the story today about cancer. We have seen a, a remarkable recovery. We've read reports about recovery from cancer. And right now we bind cancer in people's bodies and shrink it down and eliminate it and send it away. Father God, we just pray by the power of the Holy Spirit, cancer be gone in Jesus name and we loose and release healing and the Holy Spirit's love, healing power mm. over those watching with cancer right now. Just Father God, we curse that cancer and send it away in Jesus name. And right now we just find any, any headaches, torturous headaches, uh, migraines that people are suffering from just right now in Jesus name, we bind it up and declare it to be null and void in the name of Jesus. Anyone, who, whoever's watching with a migraine has been suffering from migraines, migraines, just receive this healing from the Lord. It will not return in Jesus' name. Father God, I just come against loneliness for those who are feeling isolated and alone. Father, you're faithful. You are faithful. You love us with an everlasting love. And Lord God, I just pray your release of love upon the audience in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Hey everyone, I'm Ashley Key. Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so we can reach more people with encouraging content like you just watched and so you never miss a beat. See you next time and God bless.